Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Trash Chronicles, the show about a group of uh, a group of revolutionaries overthrowing. I'm joking. But yes, but also there's a whole lot going on. Okay, so a deer showed up in a uh, suburban park. It was not no bueno, and so uh, a group of the undesirables were sent away <laughs> uh, to escort the deer away. <laughs> I'm just. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure ev- uh, now we are in the uh, high fantasy world inhabited by the group of animals known as the wa- the the. the wild animals the forest horde where a fantastical uh, plot is being hatched to shake up the status quo a status quo uh, funded by uh, not funded by founded on the principles of survival of the fittest all that and more will continue but first we're gonna follow our nose to a little bit uh, back in time to the beginning of last episode, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna spin kick the camera out out of following Thrall Abdul's head into following the head of Chewy, who has wandered off and is following their nose to a different place, which is why he was not with us last week. So Chewy. As you went, as you were followed, following the procession of your friends uh, into the the birch tree cathedral palace of uh, the forest horde and the lynx king, your nose caught a hearty, hearty whiff of of literally everything, everything. So you've been sensing and you've been becoming attuned to the the scent language. That the animals that produce and uh, create using food have communicated with, and you catch like a rich vein of that as you enter the palace do- uh, palace doors, and you find yourself just following your nose, being whisked away to this 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 place uh, underground and tucked away uh, beside the palace. There in this place, the the scent. The scent language that you're now learning to communicate with just becomes a thick, deep, earthy, but very flavorful miasma of conversation. Things like, uh, "How long shall I should? How long should I leave these onions for?" Oh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, uh, I have. Uh, I have un- unfortunately encountered some th- this dead thing. How should I prepare it? Da, blah 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 blah. Yes, these spices. Where do they go? And what do they do? Yes, blah 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 blah. You have found like the central node, the 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 the, the apex, the gathering of all of that like scent and thought energy in this burrow. It is a deep, wide, underground kitchen bustling with activities squirrels rabbits there's a badger in here with one scratched out eye a couple of toads hopping around with a bubbling pot of something and all the way 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 in the back towards the back end uh emerging from what appears to be a storeroom uh, blocked off by leaves hanging over a tunnel entrance comes forth a chunky round figure Chewy, if you could give me a luck check. Oh, I forgot my dice. <laughs> you fool! You're so good at this. Unprepared. Shame Professional tabletop. I was RPG so unprepared today. Like I'm sorry that I whisked you away so hard and fast. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Oh, okay. Um, that's a 12. 12. Okay. For like a half a second, you think... Is that Uncle? Is that Uncle Chunky? No, 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 no. no. Immediately, you clock that this is a very large, very round uh, raccoon that does bear a sort of resemblance to your uncle and to your father. 
but they're not them. This is this is a lady. This is a this is a a rotund lady raccoon, arms full with various mushrooms and leeks, uh, who is coming over into a nat to a like a spring of water dripping out of the ceiling into this kind of discarded uh, old can uh, that she starts to wash with her raccoon hands, uh, the leeks and the mushrooms with. Um, and you're standing there bug-eyed and wander in the doorway uh, of this place into this large enormous kitchen uh, when uh, a small bird like bumps you on the shoulder and passes by you and picks up <laughs> sorry picks... there's a bug flying in my face oh it's fine a bird bumps you on the shoulder passes by you picks up a plate of something uh, like small little, like little a tray of like seed uh, and nut hors d'oeuvres and goes uh, passes by. Hey, hey, buddy, get out of the doorway! You're blocking the flood traffic. Come on! Uh, and he bumps away and scurries off where you had just came. What do you? What would you like to do in this culinary space? I want to find the person in charge and ask if I can help because I'm here anyway, right? Right. Uh, uh, do you? How do you? How do you go about doing that? Yeah, I look for the chef. Or somebody who looks like a chef? There's everyone is wearing a quote unquote like leaf made apron. There's not like a whole lot of um, yeah, yeah, no, not not like not the person who looks like them. The person who's acting like them. The one who's giving a lot of the the delegating and doing all of the you know you do this, you do that. There a seem okay, okay, okay. Give me a cunning check. That's a nine. That's a nine. You think... I mean, that badger seems to be barking orders, and he's over there by a bed of coals. He, he, I mean, that's a pretty important job. He might be the chef. Um, Is there someone less intimidating looking? <laughs> I mean, there's always... There's all there's the... the I mean, you've narrowed it down with a nine. I'm going to say you've narrowed it down to three people. The badger, the raccoon... Or the squirrel over prepping with a with a piece of glass, uh, using a piece of glass as a knife. I'm gonna go to the raccoon. To the raccoon. Familiarity and all. Yeah. So as you approach this raccoon, I mean you've already taken note of the family resemblance, but it could just be a raccoon resemblance. But you get closer, and you distinctly smell a recipe. A recipe that, you know, you've made thousands of times in your own kitchen. And as you catch the whiff of this recipe off of this old raccoon lady, you can even see in your mind's eye, like, the index card, the stained index card uh, with that recipe on it. You know, the last, one of, like, the oldest things in the kitchen. And you smell that off of her, and she turns around, and she looks at you, and she says... Wait, uh, who are you? Hello? Uh, hi. I'm a stranger from strange lands, uh, but that smells like something from my restaurant. Can I help you make it? She, uh, she leans, she leans, like, way down. This is a very large old lady. She leans way, way down, and she goes, Why do you smell like my kid brothers? Uh... Are your kid brothers from the park? Hmm. Perhaps. And she hands you a piece of glass. Ooh. Uh, and she, as she, she continues to wash dirt off leeks and mushrooms, uh, and hands them to you. And you can see that um, no one's using any like recipe or receipt resets uh, in here. Uh, everyone is more or less communicating and kind of improvisationally creating a new dish using the combined sort of... Sorry, there's like a ambulance. Um, ghost, real quick. Freaking ghost right yeah, there. Um, oh, this is like so real fast ghost. <laughs> Um, there's sort of, there's like a sort of improvisational, like, dance, uh, to this kitchen environment, 
where everyone's communicating with the scent language, a scent language that is like very useful for communicating things in this culinary environment, this olfactory environment. Um, and so you kind of, uh, you kind of smell along. And uh, with the glass, you start to you start prepping the way that you've always prepped in the kitchen. And every so often, she'll lean over and say, "Why do you use your Why is your thumb like that? That thumb goes on top of the blade, so you just get some more control." Yeah. Oh. Yeah. My father taught me to do it this way. Yeah, your father was. If I know, if I think I know who your father is, he's an idiot. I I mean. Probably true. I mean, oh, is, it, is it is his name Nibbles? Uh, so you are his child. Okie dokie. I guess it's time to go. Uh, huh? And she takes off her apron uh, and starts to fold it and says, Ladies and gentlemen, it's been very nice cooking with you, but my past has found me. And she grabs your arm and holds it up. It's time for me to move on. Uh, I'm so very sorry. That I could not stay and cook with you longer. It has been wonderful. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no. Uh, if this has anything to do with the activities in the city, I'm not cool with the things they do. I don't want you to leave on account of me being here. Hmm. I won't tell anyone that you're here. I, I promise you that. You keep talking and she gets like closer and closer with her snout. With her snot, like her snoot, and just sniffs around, like really deep into the back of your ears and your neck. <laughs> Dear child, it is already too late for you. They have. Mm -hmm. It is already too late. You, you have, you've already become one of them. I can smell on you that you've already done their, their dirty work. Yeah, once. I didn't know until after. A lot after. Then why do you, uh... Hold on. You smelled the poison, but it is not on you anymore, is it? Hmm. It's with uh, with the guy they wanted me to kill, actually. I, I told him about it, and, and I gave it over. You may call me Nona Munchies. Okay. <laughs> and what can I call you, little one? Hmm? My name's Chewy. Little Chewy. Mm. Little Chewy. No na munchies, no na munchies, little chewy. Yeah. All right, I guess I'm staying. This little one may be tainted, but he's not cursed. Let's cook. Uh, and uh, uh, the I mean, there was a little bit of lull there in the in the before uh, when she said she was about to leave. Uh, but she claps her hands. Everything goes back to to the real hustle and bustle. You see uh, chopped bits of vegetable, root vegetable, fly through the air. Uh, into pots of boiling stuff, uh, pinches of salt being thrown haphazardly all over the place. Again, a beautiful improvisational dance of cooking that culminates uh, in just, you see, a large, pl a beautifully plated meat dish. And everyone is looking at it. The badger's got his hand right here on his on his mouth and he's tapping his... Nona's right there, and she's kind of, just kind of, just smelling it. It's a big piece of uh, what used to be rabbit meat on a, on the bone still. And just kind of in a bed of this brown sauce and chopped vegetables. This squirrel is pacing back and forth. All three of them, these head chefs, they think you can tell that that's the, that's the scent that's hanging in the air. And they're all thinking this needs something. Go, go, gadget, Google search. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, he's obsessed with rabbits. <laughs> you guys ever had rabbits with cider before? Cider? Cider. Cider. Uh, now, I don't... I don't really know how much things have changed in the park, but how often do you guys eat rabbit in the park? Uh... <sighs> Well, not normally, but my restaurant has some uh, connections. Mm. I'm going to and... try not to, deal, uh, to dwell on that, but sure, yes. Yeah, same. Um, cider. Uh, uh, trust me. Uh, soak some, soak some apple slices in some cider, and just lay them thin slice on top. You are them. Go, go, go! Uh, and the the badger goes into a storeroom and comes back with a whole apple. It's very large. The squirrel starts to ch uh, dice it all, uh, dice up uh, it into little cubes. And uh, then Nona comes back with just uh, a, like a uh, like a bottle cap of of cider and places it down onto the table. And the whole kitchen watches in anticipation as the juices work their way through the chunks. Um, and at Chewie's, at, at Chewie's mark, the, the final piece to this work is added on top. Excuse me. <clears throat> Burping. Because I ate and also had fizzy beverage. Um... <laughs> Amen, brother. And the whole kitchen smells beautifully. Like stew and vegetables and now cider and spice. There is only one thing left to do now, I suppose, says says Nona Munchies. And she takes up the plate and she walks out the way that you came in. Conveniently, right as uh, right as Thrall Abdul started to book it away, <laughs> just missing everyone else. Nona Munchies, uh, and if you want to follow, you can go ahead and follow her too. Comes and enters the throne room of the Lynx King. Do do you follow her? Yes. Uh, as long as it seems like she's okay with me following. Eh, she's, uh, she seems fine. Alright, I'm, I'm curious as to, like, what we were making this for, and if the person likes it, so... Hmm? Yeah? Yeah. <coughs> you follow Nona Munchies into the Grand Throne Room, flanked on either side by towering, uh, towering white trees. I forgot. Birch trees. There we go. Uh, by towering white birch trees in beautiful archways made naturally by the branches. The light is filtered in through the leaves, leaving a, a beautiful, wide, open energy. Um, and there, standing before a throne of bones, is a young boy, but still very much taller than you, um, wearing a cape surrounded by wrinkly old vultures. And Nona Munchies, and she brings the plate uh, to him, and she says, Your Majesty, if it pleases you, here is lunch. And she hands the plate over to the Lynx King with a bow. And... The Lynx King looks down at it. He takes the plate in one hand. Rabbit. She brings us rabbits. Ironic. Yeah. Hmm. I suppose I should get used to it then. Right?
He puts the plate down on the throne of bones and with the same hand picks up the rabbit chunk of meat with his hand and bites into it. Almost the whole muscle of meat into his mouth. My compliments to the badger and to the squirrel. Lady Munchies, you have truly outdone yourself today. He takes the bone and starts to stab at the, the vegetables and starts to eat that at them, gobbling them all up. Ugh. That's just exactly what I needed. It's just very well done. Very, very good. Thank you. Uh, and he puts the bone down on the table. And with the same hand as he's done all of these things, he hands the plate back to Nona Munchies. Your Majesty, uh, it appears that I have found um, one of my own from my homeland. Oh, is that so? Is it the smaller raccoon behind you? Yes! yes. Did you uh, enjoy the little uh, apple uh, bits on the, on the top there? Oh, yes, I thought that was, I thought that was your handiwork. <laughs> oh no, no, no! Now it was his idea, his idea. And he looks at you. And gives you a nod. <laughs> <laughs> Put him to work in my kitchen immediately. I would like to eat m more of what he has to offer. Um, and as. You follow your Nona back to the kitchen. Uh, we hear Detective Sam Morgan crashing through the ceiling on the back of a vulture. <laughs> and now we're up to speed. And now we're up to speed! <laughs> we did it, gang. Full disclosure, uh... Ma said I forgot to watch the VOD, so I have no idea what happened last time. Oh, I, I, am matter, in, right? I am in the mindset of Chewie. That, as I said, that's you actually are, kind of appropriate. You have no idea what's happening. Yeah, we'll fill you in. <laughs> yeah, we, you you can't, can't, your character has kind of expertly just missed everyone. <laughs> and then we return to the end of the last episode uh, with the lords of the, the Warren Lords, uh, two big ass rabbits, in a burrow under a under a tr under a bush of a bush of berries. Having a spot of tea with our two revolutionary possums. They caught dear Timothy the other day. It was uh, very not good. I did not like it at all. But they did that. They're probably cooking him up and eating him in the palace as we speak. Probably for the next couple of days or so. He was one of ours. Why is it that our children, they always die? Uh... Th like these, these two large rabbits, just completely oblivious to the to just how unfit they are to survive <laughs> in the wild because of their massive size and they're meant for in their and they're being bred in captivity, meant to be novelty pets of large rabbit size. Their large, floppy ears acting more as clothes than anything that they're actually wearing. Um, and it is then that we pan over and see the two, our two possums, uh, with cups filled with little berry juice teas, uh, and, uh, little seed crumpets made by the Warren Lord's attendants. Hey. Jesus. <laughs> Did you just turn off your light? <laughs> yeah, I wanted to see what it looked like. It was, uh, freaky. A little bit. <laughs> it was a little bit freaky. My webcam sucks. Um, we simply cannot have the 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 vultures have their way with the the the. They want to. They want us. I mean, 
They just want our excess children? What defines a child as excess? It's not just the excess children. They, they just... I don't think they'd want to kill the children. They'd kill people after they have children. So not just, oh my goodness, not just, not just the men, but the women and children too? Yes. <laughs> Prickle reference. <laughs> Ronnie, that cup of tea you're miming is head. way too small. These are very large rabbits. Yeah, this. Okay, that's a bit too much. Like, oh, find a happy medium. Do the video. I imagine there was a conversation before we walked into this room where Ronnie was like, listen, I, I truly didn't think I'd ever say the sentence, but I think this is a situation where I should do whatever you think is best. And so he's just been... <laughs> As Ruby does the talking. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah so, so how do we, how do use to how do use to uh think that we that we should proceed? We you have the full support of uh, my uh the, the my 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 family and the, my family's children and my family's children's children and my children's children of the children of the children of my family and my family's children's children and my children's family's family's children's uh, and my great uncle and my great uncle. We are rabbits. <laughs> okay. It's a, uh, it's what we do, and and there's at that at that point there's like a, a solid two minute period of the two warlords just making out. Oh, uh, should we? Yeah, but that's not all you here, can please? do, right? <laughs> Don't you want to live up to your full expectations? Yes, we make uh we make the babies. Uh, we raise the plants. And we harvest the plants, and we're making the babies. What if you could spend less time making babies and more time making food? Whoa, hang on. <laughs> Sam, <laughs> Sam, somewhere else. Had a if we make it, <laughs> we make the babies so that we don't have to do the labor anymore. We can hand the labor off to the babies. And when the babies are big enough to not to to do, to make their own babies, they can make their own babies to hand the labor off to. That is the crux of war and lord society. Oh, so they wouldn't kill your children then? It'd be you guys, the ones that don't work. We work sometimes. Well, I think these guys might not be on our sides. In fact, they may uh, be part of the problem. Oh <laughs> yeah. no. Uh, uh, we're we're uh, slim pickings here. We're outsiders. <laughs> the point of, the point of being the point of, the point of being is that uh, they could uh, they could decide that the whole family just be sacrificed as a as a source of food instead of just picking the slow ones off one by one as they are doing now. Yeah, they they'd have more quantity instead of the uh, like lowered quality, I guess. You do not refer to living things as low quality, please. The, Actually, they, the, they're the, the ones the living. Meat would be the lower quality. <laughs> I'm not there. You <laughs> you're it's either really working or you're meat. It should not be that that much of a dichotomy. Here. You take this. You take this. Uh, and she hands you um, like a, a a whistle made out of bark and uh, blades of grass. When you need when you need the might of the 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 the, 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 the of the barons of the four of the of the Warren lords, you bloodis, we all come. The barons. All right. Of the Warren lords. Did I get that right? We are we are many, and we are fluffy. Okay, I just I just worry that you might need to get a rebrand, because uh, that's that's a mouthful. Well, we have many, uh, and we are the we are the barons of the various you, lords but, of the Warren. Okay, but for me to get the point across, can you try saying barons of the Warren lands five times fast? Well, barons of the Warren lords, 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 barons of the Warren lords. 
Yeah, it's, 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 never mind. Don't worry, it's fine. I'm I'm just here for emotional support, honestly. Uh... <laughs> yeah. So Sounds thank like we, you we so much support. for this gift. I will call upon you in our time of need. And I, is can you I take the tea mug with me, or do I need to chug this? Uh, don't take it, but you don't have to chug. I just said chugging. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, thank you. He's already choking, but <laughs> it's like spilling down the sides. <laughs> All right, there you go. Take this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You guys have a good one. Uh, and as you guys exit, you find yourself standing in the tall, slender, and pointed-eared shadow of a fox. And we're going to cut up uh, to the another uh, hero of ours in a very different shadow. Uh-oh. I was thinking uh, about to say, like, what, so what do you think the over-under odds that Sam's dead? <laughs> it's pretty good. So, so we open the door to shadow and the camera pans. Yep, yeah, pans up to, uh, yes, to, detect, to, to Detective Sam Morrigan in a different shadow. A shadow... Of a bird. A predatory bird. Shadow of a colossus. <laughs> a bird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the... gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> the problem being is that you can't clock the whole silhouette of this bird. It is way, way up and it has coalesced into a single dark bead in the middle of the sun. And it seems to be growing exponentially. Give me a finesse check. A finesse check. Ooh, what's my finesse? Got that plus dose. Let's go, baby. Roll high or die. Uh, that is a 12. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. Ah! Literally roll higher, die yeah, right roll now. Higher, die. <laughs> Rolling for my life right now. Do you want to a speed up at the last second, or a speed up at the last second, or b slow down at the last second? Uh, let's slow down at the last second. I feel like it's very. I feel like we're in like Star Fox sixty four combat right so now. So you <laughs> you saw for a brief moment the full outline of a of a falcon in the sun above you which coalesced very fast into a single black bead of malice that grew exponentially. And you recognize this because you did train in combat against one falcon who is part of the BPD in the park. Um, it was just part of training. You never really expected to use this training ever before in your life, but thank God you did because, <laughs> because you slowed down the very last second, pitching up hard and fast, and you catch your own reflection in the gleaming silver talon clawed blades of this falcon in templar hood coming down and uh, just missing you in super slow-mo it's almost to the point where your hat tips off of your head let's catch my hat <laughs> yes yeah, sir uh, so, I'm, fight, I'm fighting a, a goddamn Templar knight. <laughs> Correct. This is turned into Templar turned into Falcon. Dark Souls. Dark Souls so fast. Templar Falcon. I am. I am gonna die. <laughs> Let's. Burns. You've got. You've got. Uh, not a lot of time before you have to dodge another attack. Uh, obviously the first. So <coughs> the benefit of you know fighting a Falcon is that the first attack is the one that they really really want. To kill, which is, yeah. you know, the rule for most assassin classes. Yeah, Whether it be... It's the sniper shot, right? The sniper the shot. It's the ninja kill. You always gotta, you gotta put all your beans. Gotta be very certain that the very first strike is gonna kill. That's the rule that this Templar Falcon seems to be going by as well. Man, I really wish we kept those Sentais from earlier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'd come in handy right now. Help us think we were gonna need to fight awful oh. war. Morgan, what's your game plan? Uh, I am going to uh, dip back below the canopy of the trees and try to hide. Okay. Um, 
given that the falcon just dove down in front of you, that means you might have to uh, dodge a second attack as you also dive down to get into the canopy. I, I, it's the first thing that came into my mind, so we're gonna roll with it. Go for it. That's thank right. you so thank you so much for not changing your mind. <laughs> Go ahead yep. and get, uh, give me give me <laughs> another finesse right check. Uh, let's see. It's the only that's time six. to not die. Seven plus two is a nine, so just it's a big success this time. Success. Um, I you know what? Let's be let's be a little bit fair here. Fair and balanced. Perfectly balanced. As all things should be. Fight is. Okay. Oh, we we need you a take, snap right now. You take one harm. As the talons of this falcon uh, re- rent, uh, break across your back, sec- like a half second before you manage to get completely under the cover of the trees. God damn it! I like that coat. You, you had pitched up and kind of curved back down into the, like uh, curved around in a P formation and came rocketing down right after it and it's in that moment that the falcon kind of pulled back up and started to rake its claws up you know just shredding your coat you take a harm there's uh it hurts but it's a little bit of a sacrifice just to get to a yeah, more advantageous it. place yeah, so that's one in that's yeah. one injury yeah all right yep yeah. i got that okay but now you're in more. Now you're in your element. You're a smaller, more agile bird, meant, uh, you know, for the for the arboreal playing ground. And this is, although uh, one of the smaller falcons, a peregrine falcon, does not play well in the tight branch laden uh, battlefield that you've now chosen for it. I am going to. I am going to hide and try to recoup and try to figure out a plan of attack from here. Gotcha. Because Give me a cunning I check. Be, I do not want to be here. <laughs> uh, let's see. Cunning's my good one, so that's an eight. Gotcha. Um, so you manage to just you're thinking fast. You're taking in a bunch of information all at once. Hole in the tree, right in. You swoop right in. You use your black pellet, your black coat, just to dis- disappear into the blackness of the hollow of this tree that you've spotted. Completely disappearing. We see the whoosh of you see the whoosh of the white hooded falcon zip right past. None the wiser. There is a moment of your racing heart still beating in your ears. Your breath slowly catching up to you. And then you hear, Who are you? Morgan? I didn't didn't, didn't hear what you just said. (laughs) So I'm, I'm, I'm contemplating whether or not to talk and give away position. If you're Uh, wondering if I can see you, I can. Who are you? you. No, it's not you. You're not. They're not near you. I thought. I thought that was the. I I thought that was. Nona. No. No. I'm sorry. My voices are all similar. It's it's also just me. Gotcha. (laughs) Like I'm. I'm bad at differentiating too. So. Uh... (laughs) Okay. Okay. I have to I have to ask a question, but we will I will bring it up when the time is more appropriate. So So you can see me, huh? That's pretty good. Uh, I'm pretty sneaky. Darkness is a blanket for me, but an iron maiden to most. So who are you? Well, uh, if we're exchanging formalities, I am Detective Sam Morgan, Bird Police Department. Who may I ask am I entreating with? You converse with the seeker of who's, what's, when's, where's, why's, and how's. Well, I got a real yappy here. Just say your name, buddy. Well, (laughs) most people call me how. Uh, all right. Uh, um, 
and stepping into the light uh, filtered by the canopy and entering the hole of this uh, hollowed tree is a, a sort of old looking kind of grayed out horned owl. Oh, so there's more so there's more of you. Dressed in like almost almost too cartoonishly purple and star laden robes. What the hell? Are you with the are you with the Falcon? Oh no, I'm not a Templar. <laughs> Ooh, am I gonna die here? No. I seek it, it, not it, blood, it, it, I seek wisdom and answers. And the things that I don't yet know. Okay, uh, I'm going to ask you one favor, Mr. Howe. Uh, can we keep the voices down? Because I am being pursued by, uh, what'd you say, a, a Templar? Templar. All right, I'm going to ask a quick question, and then you can ask whatever you want. What the hell's a Templar? Oh, a sort of winged killer. Hmm. Yes, a winged killer at the beck and call... Of those in power, yes. Mm. Those yeah, who true. face that's them true. rarely see the next day. Well, Sam's like taking off his coat, and he's like, "Yeah, I can tell." <laughs> like inspecting oh. the damage to his coat. Yeah, I got that. Uh, I got picked that up. Uh, so what you're saying is that I'm in, I'm in trouble at the moment. Not you know, at the probably... moment. In the moment, you are with me. Oh, and I am too know. annoying for the Falcon. Oh, oh, thank God. I mean, you're almost too annoying for me, but right now, that does not matter. How you are something else, pal. All I'm right. an owl. Yes, that's correct. As I picked that up. Okay. You speak uh, very odd tongue for a bird. <laughs> a look who's talking, pal. All right. Uh, you said you had questions. You were a seeker of knowledge and whatnot. Good. What are you looking for? <coughs> and he spits up an owl pellet. The bones! The bones tell me all I need to know. Oh, man, that was gross. He is uh, a fucking oracle. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need a mini <laughs> Wow, that was something. Uh, all right. Um... A stranger. Four strangers... From a strange, yet not so strange to me, land of not giants. So not so strange to you? A friend of a friend of a friend knows your land very well. Let's, hang on, let's rewind that. Who's your friend of a friend of a friend? Well, the friend of my friend is also my friend, who is also a friend of me. Uh, we're getting nowhere. Uh, it's, uh, we play craps on Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> She's a raccoon. Okay, so in your little prophecy there, that sounds oddly familiar, considering that I am one of a party of four. It wasn't a prophecy; it was an explanation. I just wanted to know where you were. I felt the question in my stomach. I felt the question in my stomach, and the stomach answered. Unfortunately, this little rat had to die for me to understand. Oh. Hang on. I am a bird of prey, after all. No, I got pick owl up. Owl side where eye. You, where did you pick up this rat? From the ground? Owls can't move their eyes. <laughs> well, yeah, it's an owl side eye, so he's got his head tilted like this. Yeah. <laughs> just turning his whole head anyway. Right. <laughs> it's just the wording that he used. I wanted to point that out and be an ass. Okay, Brennan. <laughs> Mr. Bird Facts over there. <laughs> Get in the comments! I'm interested in ecology, I can't help it. <laughs> I'm a dweeb, sue me. <laughs> Pokemon, it's all Pokemon's fault. Right. I love Hoot Hoot. I gotta be more specific with my questions, is what I'm understanding here. Where specifically on the ground did you pick up this rat? <laughs> Oh, oh boy, <laughs> that's awful. So Sam's adventure without us is learning um, that like there are worse people out there than Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
I'm I'm used happy to happy go Sam. back to you guys. Don't worry. Be Sam's least favorite person, <laughs> and now he's his Hi, favorite. Sam. And she didn't I'm get any better. An uprising. Sam, <laughs> Sam is legitimately thinking about hugging Ruby, and he's like, I feel disgusted. <laughs> <laughs> The bones tell me you're worried about a friend that you made along the way. Don't worry, he still lives. Okay. This is the wildest thing. Listen, uh... These are wastes of rat bones. Yeah, these are... I just feel like you can get so much more Uh. damage out of these. How many rats you got in there? Don't... Do not do do it again. (laughs) That was just a bitch! I'm just belching. You are just, man. I listen. I you are making me miss home so bad, but uh, I I can't believe I'm contemplating stepping back outside. Uh, what can I do to get out of this situation, uh, Mister How? Uh, I need to get back to. Uh, I need to get away from that night and a lot of people pursuing me at the moment, and I need to get back to my group. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I perhaps might know a way, but I don't think you're going to like it. Oh, man. Is it worse than stepping outside to the Templar? Well, here's the thing. Everybody talks in a pseudo-telepathic kind of way by scent, so if you could mask your scent... I, I can I can actually do that, yeah. Okay. And he unzips his pants and <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> uh it, it, listen, if you want it if you if you don't want to happen, make a cunning check. Oh no. Oh we're gonna make a cunning check. <laughs> oh no. Uh, that's uh ten. It's okay. a ten. Oh, you nice. you just yeah. missed the piss stream. I... <laughs> uh, I, 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 can, I can mask my own scent. We are, I do, you do not need to defecate on me. That's fine. Piss your pants. Piss your pants right now, Sam. You gotta do it to yeah. live. We kind, of, kind of we kind of established in the last <laughs> one that my cigar smoke, <laughs> smoke, smoke confuses me. I, wanna, I, I know you're about... Back. You're gonna say something about a cloaca, I swear to God. No, 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 it's worse. Oh no. <laughs> I wanted to jump, double check because owls don't poop, they do pellets. I wanted to double check if they peed. And they do, but it, it doesn't look like pee. Hmm. Okay. I'm not gonna look into uh, that, but alright. Don't. Just. Okay! Don't. Okay. <laughs> this is the worst hobble I've ever been in. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my! It's white. <laughs> so we established we established in the previous episode that my cigar smoke can pseudo uh, disrupt smell uh, as kind of a confused senses. Would that work in this situation? Probably better. Probably better than getting. There's food. okay. I'm gonna give you this. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you two sides of this coin. Yes, you won't smell like a crow, but you are probably the only crow that smells like a cigar. That's fair. That is a fair point. Smoke a cigar and piss your pants. Uh, <laughs> what if I? Uh, I got an idea. What if? What if we make shift something out of this pile you just barfed up in front of me? Now that's just gross. Someone's getting pooped on, man. But we we are running out of time. <laughs> Make a bone rat coat. Skull helmet. Yeah, rat skull helmet. Make a fucking yeah. bone coat. Did bone you just coat. say those words yeah, like it wasn't one of the badass? <laughs> You're making a, make a bone, bone coat? coat. Make a bone coat. Okay. <laughs> that um. That was my nickname in high school. Actually. Like <laughs> bone coat. Like did you carry around a trench? <laughs> Wait, hold on. Did you carry around a trench coat <laughs> in which girls would sneak in and give you pleasures? <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's the bone really coat. Funny. That's really good. <laughs> I think I wore a trench coat for an upsettingly large amount of secondaries. <laughs> I would have if I could afford one. Sign on the inside that says "Welcome to the Bone Zone." <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen. I came in high school this often. This yeah. <laughs> We got I you, just man. think got you're you. doing a bit. So. Got you, man. Hot <laughs> crispy <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay, uh, if you want to create a 
a bone laden disguise, I guess it'd probably take a fairly high um <sighs> fine- okay. cunning. It's a crafting okay. thing, so honestly can finesse or cunning could could be applicable. Okay. Uh, but if you want to, you could um, mark off a couple of depletion to lower the DC. Um. Yeah, why not? How many depletion are do you want to sacrifice we'll, for this? We'll, we'll, we'll sacrifice one. Just one. Once. Okay. Uh, you're going to need to make a cunning or finesse check of I want to say nine or higher. Okay, I have a plus three to cunning, so I just need to roll. The it odds be in your favor, it. laddie. Yeah. Well, I rolled a six on one of the die with the three on the other, so that is a grand total of twelve. Cool, cool. Um, okay, so you've I'm you've marking depletion while doing it. Awesome. Uh, man, the chat is going crazy right now. <laughs> the oh. chat of three people. Awesome. I love I you guys. Be in chat. <laughs> you have traded in your uh, you know, nineteen twenties noir detective garb. For what can only be described as bird pretending to be plague doctor. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, you know what? You you describe this new uh bone laden garb. I would say that uh, well, the first thing that Sam does is empty the pockets of the coat where he kept like nearly everything that was on him. Starts yeah. shoving it into his pants pockets instead, and uh, like shirt pockets, all that kind of everything. Everywhere else, he can't fit something from the coat. And because the coat's been shredded to pieces, he's using that to effectively make, like, a cloak and tie off pieces of bone and and straps around it to make it, uh, like, this this long robe with, like, lar- with long bones running down it. And uh, takes a, a rat skull and manages to, like, carve out the bottom jaw and everything and fit it uh, under his bowler hat so that his bowler hat can still be active. So he just has, like, this bowler hat over a rat skull. Like you kind a, of now look like horrifying. some of our Undertakers. It's like it's like deceased Chuck E. Cheese wearing a Rip. bowler hat. Can, can we just agree oh, that this back. should be the Patreon art? <laughs> new bone. Is, I, I also want to apologize for not getting around to making, A, a new promo TikTok for the last episode, or the Patreon art from last episode, because I had to work on Tuesday, uh, and today I decided to take a mental health day instead of doing anything. It happens. Uh, oh, yeah. Get off so Tuesday, I'm going to probably be a l- very busy <laughs> catching up. So, yeah, cool. I mean, if you want to do that, you look... Oh. Really goth and oh. awesome. Yep. Yeah, yeah. um, Sam oh, Sam looks oh. like Hall- Halloween Sam. He's like getting Hall- ready for the season. Getting ready for the season. That's cool. Spooky Sam. Spooky. It's like Sam spooky opening Sam. for Ghost. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. So, so all right. Well, this. this so is, now you smell uh, like dead rat. Now I smell like dead rat. Yep. Uh, and, and all our food vomit. smell. <laughs> you. If I close my eyes and take you in only with my olfactory senses, you're a bat, which is weird for flying out in the daytime, but not weird, but not like, but not unheard of. Okay, uh, I'll take that. I'll, I that's better than the alternative. The owl alternative? Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh God damn it! Well, He's coming back. You might want to leave. There's a couple more bones I can add into there from there. I'll just take that. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> uh, and, yeah. Uh, I mean, you should be safe. Uh, because the stat to the Falcon Templars do really like to come at you from above. So if you stay beneath the tree line, you should be fine. <clears throat> I've been getting... I've been, I've been smelling in on a heated debate on whether or not people should be forced to sacrifice themselves to the predators. <laughs> it's been exhilarating. There's a new voice. Uh, it, uh, is a new voice that's, that smells awfully salty uh, and of, you know, weird human confections uh, leading the charge on this n- this new ideological thing. All right, hmm. all right, all right. All right. Where's, I, I'm, I'm going to just say... Where do you that that singular voice? Can you tell me where that's coming from? I have no idea how this scent thing works, and I can only smell dead rat right now. I'm very scared. 
Oh, uh, they uh, they uh, went to the the they went to the warrens of the they went to the the warrens of the of the warren lords, the rabbit encampment with all the berry bushes and the fruit trees. Okay. How it's uh, it's uh, not far that away. I mean, on ground, the whole scope of the kingdom is very large, but we are winged, blessed creatures, so it shouldn't be that long for you. Yeah, there's, the only problem is, is that there's a lot of winged things after me, too. So, uh, yeah. well, I appreciate it. Is there a way to get back in touch with you? Do you have, like, a calling card? Hmm. No. No? All right. How? Just I want to say this was a pleasure. Needed. <laughs> you want to say that, but I can tell in your voice it wasn't. It was pretty gross, but uh, it was more helpful than not, and I do appreciate that. Take this, and he rummages around in, uh, in the, the the back of his just eclectic pile of let's be honest here wizard shit, uh, and just hands you a firecracker. Okay, uh, I am gonna make an even trade for you so that I don't owe more of a debt than I do, uh, and I'm going to hand him the bottle cap for my baubles. For helping me. Ooh! Now this is a fun hat, and it puts it on. It's little, it's pretty small on his owl head, but just a little disc, just a little disc right there on his owl head, yeah. in between his little owl horns, because he's a horned owl, but he's also old. I hate it. A, it says Corona because it's a crown. <laughs> corona. <laughs> I don't know why, but I hate it. Well, uh, Fanny, well, weirdo, and he kicks you out of the birds. Uh, kicks you out of the house, oh, out of the hall. Uh, <laughs> whoa, brother! Uh, whoa, uh, brother! Uh, as you fall, <laughs> as you fall, covered in bones uh, and fur of another creature, we pan back uh, to Ronnie and Ruby in the shadow of one handsome creature. One. My name is Captain Dash Foxworthy, and I've been sent by the Lynx King to bring you back to the castle. And what if we say no? Took the words right out of my mouth, Ruby. I mean, I'm for a fist bump. Just let's just go. That's not. That's we not with this. Answer. This. No. This back and forth. No, it's, the question. no, it's very tiresome. I've listen. I've. It's been a long dick. Just, just come along. Oh, let's go. Shut the fuck up and answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we brought Ruby along. This is. This is. Uh, we're all like, why the fuck is Ruby a cop now? This is Ruby's a cop now. This is why we need him. Yeah, I, I have a, a badge and everything. I flashed my badge. That's Ruby. We're not, that's what? Like, what, what is that? What? What is that? I don't know what that is. Yeah, it means um, that I'm in charge and you have to answer my questions. I don't need a... What? <laughs> that tells you that you're in charge? And he gets, yeah. he gets real low and like really in your face. And he bears all of his fox teeth. These. These here. These are the things that tell me that I am in charge. Are you kind of like a weak little bitch, though? Because, <laughs> well, like, yeah, your teeth are cool. Um, I'm just gripping the, the salt in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, surprise me, as a guy who's very strong, strength doesn't make up everything. Yeah, so you ain't making this optional. Ruby, <laughs> make a finesse check. Okay. Excuse me while I pull up my protection abilities. <laughs> Cause I'm gonna that's fucking a, need them in a that's second. That's a good call. That's a good call. What's your roll? That was a six. That's a six. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, let's see. Let's here. resolve. Um, let let us let us yeah. put all the cards on the table. Dash Foxworthy has bored his teeth and is lunging at the Ruby's body to okay, pick her up like and just take use... her. I would like to use. I have two abilities specifically designed to keep Ruby safe. Which one do I want to use? Um, 
when you are in reach, you may mark exhaustion to take a blow for for them. If you do, take plus one ongoing to weapon moves the rest of the scene. I would like to push Ruby out of the way and take the hit for her. You take two injury uh, as Ooh. Captain... You have as much HP as Ruby has because <laughs> I have five injury boxes. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, you... <laughs> Boxes. You take two points of injury as the front teeth of Captain Dash Foxworthy sink into your chest and torso and picks you up off of the ground. Pocket salt. Pocket salt. <laughs> okay. I just I just shove salt directly into his eyes. But <laughs> <laughs> that would hurt so bad. You take an additional injury as he winces in pain, driving his teeth deeper into your body. I'm still at pretty good HP. <laughs> no. All right, I'm running out of ideas here. I, I'm for the flashlight, I guess. Or you could let me do something. <laughs> yeah, please. I'm being attacked because <laughs> I saved your life. Please yeah, do I'm, literally I'm just... anything. I want to leap on his face using Daredevil to give me a luck armor and pour my skunk spray onto his nose. Okay. Uh, yeah, we might not win the battle, but we're gonna. Yeah. <laughs> just to, like, he's just very precisely get it in his nose. Just, just like, like just hitting him with that flow nays right up the face. Like freaking just car. Just like enter the scent network. Karma from uh, right? it might hold on. Uh, let's let's resolve this. Uh, so what exactly is the ef uh, effect of all of your stuff, uh, uh, Moss? Yes. Okay. So that was. I was debating whether or not to use like blind side or confused senses. I think that'd be senses. Yeah, like it, it would definitely be confused senses. Uh, I did have these written down. Roll with finesse on a hit. Just straight up okay. karma from Assassination Classroom. <laughs> That's an eight, so... Uh, we only have a few moments. Gotcha. Uh, you leap on to, I guess, Ronnie's back at this point, because, you know, it's in teeth and the torso yeah, and all that. Yeah, this. Yeah, it's just, it's yeah, okay. Awesome you pour the skunk spray, like, directly into Foxworthy's nose, and he winces and shakes his head, shakes, uh, Ruby free off of the front, but, like, Ronnie is still there for just a couple of seconds. Uh, Stadika Foxworthy goes, like... <laughs> <laughs> spits Ronnie out uh, skidding across the ground and just starts to violently shake his head teeth still stained with possum blood and saliva his nose filling up with mucus and it's all like slobbering out of his nose and face area just kind of just writhing back and forth uh, just I would love to see this kind of animated back to back as like a humanoid fox and an actual fox just Freaking out simultaneously. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'd like to break this guy's fucking teeth, please. <laughs> okay, give me, give me a. Called cleave. Uh, I would like to break this man's fucking teeth, please. I have a big metal flashlight and a move called cleave. Go, keep I'm go. Doing some, de some dental damage. Do okay. Do some dental. Do some dentistry, I guess. Okay. <laughs> So let's see here. Not gonna be so strong without that, your teeth, huh? That is a six plus four is ten plus three is thirteen plus an additional one from taking the hit from Ruby is fourteen. Don't okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm breaking a fucking thing. You're yeah. You. I mean, it's a little. I mean, I was. Eh. He's bucking. And he's writhing, it's and all he's about slobbering. It's all about feeling the dance, this this painful stink dance that this fox is doing. You're bobbing, you're weaving, you feel the funky flow, you feel the 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 weight in your flashlight. 
as you spin once around, twice around, three times around, and finally the j lower his lower jaw connects with the bell end of the flashlight, and you send a f his his lower right fang spinning up, up, up into the canopy of the trees. You can see it like flick a couple of. Uh, of the leaves up there out of the way and as it starts to spin back down uh, Give me a finesse check if you want to try to catch that Ruby, can you catch that for me? Yes, I will catch that for you Heck yeah. <laughs> Drop it. Ooh, That's much better. That's an 11 Yeah, and Ruby you're there just to catch that thing. I Guess this means I'm in charge now <laughs> anyway, we fucked with a fox, so maybe bring that whistle or like run or whatever. You're still you're you're, you're, you're yeah. surround listen, you're still in the Warren of Warren. the Warren Lords. You are surrounded by little bunnies. There is a crowd of little bunnies watching you. They're all scared shitless because this is a fox, but there's yeah. They're I now think we have definitely knocked down the concept of a fox a couple of pegs, surely. Yeah. I need you both to make a finesse check. Okay. What do I have to finesse? Oh, what do another I have to 11. finesse? I don't think I've ever made a finesse check. I have a zero to finesse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have two. That's still a nine. It's a nine. Make success. Make success. It's 20 together. <laughs> Ronnie, I'm going to say with your mixed success, you are able to see a second fox leap from the bushes behind Ruby, baring its teeth to attack your sister. With your mixed success, you don't see, but Ruby, you see a third fox leaping in the same way uh, towards you, as there is one at your brother. You both are being attacked from behind by a second and third fox. Ronnie, you only see rubies. Rubies, you're, Ruby, you're aware of both of them. Trick shot. Yes. I'm going to just is... flashlight the one that's behind Ruby, and then Ruby's going to do Ruby things. Yes, I'm going to take out El Drago, rip him real quick, and trick shot. <laughs> Let him rip. Let him rip. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to acrobatics, but I need to hit one. Remember, remember like three sessions ago when I was like, we should solve more of our problems with violence? I was wrong, but we're here now. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out we're just good at fighting rats. <laughs> rats and toys. We're, we're surprisingly really good at fighting toys. <laughs> I really wish we had those toys right now. I would love a plus six might right now. Oh really? Would you? Would you, muscle rat? <laughs> I already got a plus Would you? Team. I get a plus one to weapon moves to this entire thing. Mm -hmm. Because I took a hit for Ruby. So what is trick shot? What did you roll for trick shot and then what did you roll subsequently for luck for El Drago? I rolled six for trick shot and that's an 11 for luck. Okay. With a mixed success, I'm going to say that you're able to rip El Drago right uh, at the fox attacking your brother. And it smashes right into the side of its face, throwing him off, uh, of, off, off course, but not off balance. So they kind of Akira skid off to the side. Um, give me, uh, I don't, we've never really utilized the flashlight function of your flashlight before. It, we just keep vaguely saying it blinds people. It blinds people. Yeah. But I've never <laughs> used it during combat, I've only used give it Give me a, so, uh, give me a luck check, as that is the, like, pseudo, because, like, most of the stuff that's, like, strictly quote-unquote magical, I've had you roll with luck thus far, so let's keep it going. Uh, that is another six and a four plus one, eleven. Eleven. So you raise and just fire a blinding beam of 1980s policeman flashlight energy at this fox who closes his eyes and just kind of winces. 
Uh, Ruby, you're able to dodge because you were able to clock both of the foxes that were attacking. It is not only till you, Ronnie, lower your flashlight and see El Drago whizzing by your face did you realize, holy shit, there was a fox attacking me as well. Uh, but those two foxes get uh, get knocked off of their courses and uh, just fail their attacks, uh, leaving you two unscathed. Uh, okay, well, we're running. Ruby, this would be the time to blow that whistle, I think. Us? Uh, or we can. Hey, hey, what? little guys! Uh, can can you go get the barons? Huh? Go run and get the barons. Uh, and a couple of seconds later, you see the barons. You are still, like, right outside oh, their so war. <laughs> We're Just like this if they weren't on their way and, already. And we're not losing the fight against three foxes, I would say. We're you, not ca- winning, we're not losing. you can see into their war and that they're, they've kind of poked their heads out just like eye level, so they're kind of like... Fuckers, get out of here. <laughs> them's as fo- them there's as big foxes. Uh... If you think a fox will will hurt you and I won't for not helping us, I'd like to use my threatening visage. <laughs> okay. I will kick your ass if you don't help us. <laughs> what, do, what do you want us to do? <laughs> Literally anything. You're you have the home field advantage right now. Are these, are these yeah, rabbits just... the size of foxes? Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are rabbits the size of foxes. Uh, <laughs> but they are twelve for threatening we'll visage. Down. You have a boot. Yeah, threatening party visage on them. is just uh, persuasion with might instead of charisma. Um. That's what it is in the film. Okay, this uh, and the two, the the lady and lord uh, of the of the of the Warren lords, the barons, the the baron and baroness of the Warren lords, they they slowly. Big fluffy paw their way out and kind of slowly shaking. It's kind of flump right over the right over Captain Jack's uh, Jack, uh, Captain Dash Foxworthy and just kind of like cool. one incapacitated. <laughs> yes, that's one down. Uh, now, one of you come over here and like kick his. No, head. that's I think it takes both of them. I think it's the one down. <laughs> Yeah, they're, like, both still vibrating with fear <laughs> as they are laying on top of this fox. The other two foxes clearly have, uh, clearly uh, having been bested in this uh, case, slink back into the tall grass, you know, with a, parting the, the smaller rabbits in their wake. Uh, and it is only then that Thrall picks his head up from the berry bush and is like, huh, did something happen? Ruby, man, borrow your new fox tooth for a second. Uh, as long as you give it back. I will. Uh, I take the fox tooth. I'm gonna walk over to the fox. I mean, he's on the ground, so I'm just gonna like, once the with the rabbits, man. Uh, and I grab him by the throat. And I'm just like leaned him way back, and I'm holding his own tooth to his neck. <clears throat> now remind me who the fuck's in charge. Who the, the fox in charge? <laughs> who the fox? <laughs> <laughs> Inspiration. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know how inspiration I don't works. Think there's inspiration. There isn't. That's fine. There is no inspiration for the <laughs> system. Shut up. Could like <clears throat> cure a depletion or something. I'll, 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 I'll they that haven't that. used depletion. <laughs> I thought of like two exhaustion and two, three injury, four injury. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of injury. I'm somehow not that. Like I still have. You're sp- I, kind of else would be dead. Bleeding. Right, and this is something that uh, Dash is like actually struggling and contemplating as you hold him in a chokehold. <laughs> yeah, I got the. Could you I'm imagine being menace- put in a situation <laughs> <laughs> where you just like bit something half to death and then mm-hmm. just got up and put you in a sleeper? <laughs> I now un- you na- he na- I now understand what every droopy dog villain feels like. Yeah, this is like every this is like every like Bugs Bunny cartoon. Oh my god! Just, like, you know what? For good for good measure, this is when the bone covered Morgan arrives on the scene. 
That's so Morgan, it's a threatening visage. <laughs> you were dead, Morgan. How are you? Uh, I'm gonna drop in and I. Uh... Oh man, you guys even recognize me? That's a. Hmm. Everybody, know. everybody, everybody, give me a cunning check to see if you recognize okay. this uh, bone undertaker that has landed. Uh, <laughs> seven. Uh, seven. I also got a seven. This is a seven. Wait, and a wait. We the two of you both got, both got a seven? Yes. That's mixed success? Yeah, mixed success. Yeah. It's, barely it's gonna t- it's gonna take you guys at least three seconds each to recognize. Uh, whoa! Back the fuck up! Back the fuck up! Yeah, I'm oh, over here threateningly opening and closing my Zippo. I, I <laughs> like pull, just in front of the fox's face. I pull my knife and crossbow out and I'd be like, "What the hell's happening here?" Oh, it's Morgan. <laughs> um, well, we have an army now, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and also I have a fox. This guy was in charge. I like how you guys just saw me, like, 20 minutes ago. (laughs) (laughs) We've had a wild, like, we've both had a wild hour. Oh, whoa, whoa, hey, is that, uh, is that you, Captain? Oh, boy, what a predicament you found yourself in there, huh? Oh, you know Foxworthy. Why are you covered in bones, bird? I don't know, why ain't you covered in bones? It looks badass. What the fuck are you complaining for? We all, yeah. we, we all, hey, Ruby, have you met Foxworthy before? I argued with him no. over a religious scent work. Uh, no, the, the, this man, guy's just a douchebag, so I wanted to take him down. Ronnie, is that, is that his own tooth? Yeah. That's oh, nice. that's good. That's a good, mm-hmm. that's a good one. All right. <laughs> This is the police brutality. This is the 20s, he, baby. <laughs> he thought that tooth put him in charge. So oh, that's that's crazy, because uh, we've had a whole wild ride leading up to this, ain't we, Captain? <sighs> so the Templar didn't get you, then? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's uh, I, I don't know. I I I could be dead. Ah, yo, look at my bones. You're not what you funny. Think? What do you think? Yeah, yeah. What do you think? Happened? What do you think happened? I think it's you a were a question to ask, isn't it? I think you were a coward and ran away. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, guess who survived? Uh, uh-huh. yeah. Guess who's got a tooth to his damn throat? Yeah. See what bravery got you. Also, by the way, Morgan, do you have any sort of medical supplies unrelated to everything else that's happening? I got. I got nothing, bud. <laughs> I'm actively uh, bleeding. Uh, I have a lighter. Is I'll that medical it. equipment? Uh, kind of. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, before before we uh, we we patch things up here, so this is where you interrogate the, yeah. the person, I believe. First, you do your thing, Morgan. Things. I'll do my thing. First things first. Just hey, Captain. Hey, Captain. Tell your boys to get the hell out of Dodge. We you... have a little. Listen, foxes. Like civilized animals. Foxes, uh, contrary to popular belief, make fucking crazy noises. And one of those fucking crazy fox oh, wow. noises exit his mouth. And any of you, uh, uh, any of you, uh, all everyone in the vicinity sees the orange tails of the other foxes go up and just leave. I can tell you that they sound absolutely terrifying because I have run into yeah, foxes at horrifying. night. <laughs> And they uh, sound like screaming children. Yeah. Hey, Morgan, also, have you seen Shuri? I'm starting to worry he's dead. I'm sure I mean, Chewie's I don't, dead. like, I'm, he's probably fine. It's Chewy, but, like, I'm worried. <laughs> one of the. We got some questions. In one of the war. One of the bar- the Baroness of the Forest ward is like, is Chewy. You know Chewy? He's a rising star in the in the, the culinary scent work. Of course. Checks right out. It checks right yeah. out, actually. <laughs> At least we know is okay. All right. So what we're gonna do here is uh, while you're while you're holding him at tooth point, at tooth point, at, yeah, at, at, at tooth end rabbit. <laughs> I'm going to yeah, zip tie. Him, like, I'm gonna to zip tie. I'm gonna zip tie him. Like, let's drag him inside. We got some questions. Oh no! Yes, please use our private uh, house as your interrogation place. Sure. I yes. Just, 
Thank you. I give her. I give I her. Doing that. I give the bear the threatening visage with my bone skull. <laughs> Like, <laughs> I've already threatened him. Yeah. You are very you scary, know. strange creatures from Strange Land. I'm gonna tell you. Yeah, we're not happy about any of the side there. Yeah. <laughs> you I'm leave. Really you leave the Baron and Baroness of the forest of the of the Baron and Baroness of the of the uh, Warren Lords uh, to converse and kind of smooth things over uh, with Thrall of Tool outside. As you drag the now zip tied paws of Captain Dash Foxworthy into the private warren of the Baron and Baroness. Ruby, are you on a set work? No, what's that? Oh, um, okay. I just don't know how this works, but if you could attune to whatever he's on so that way we know he's not stitching, I'd be appreciative. <sighs> Just, just think deceitful and chaotic thoughts, and you will understand the scent language. How are you not on that scent work? I don't know. Give me a luck check. Give me a luck check to try to tune in to the scents that are coming off of uh, Foxworthy. (laughs) That's a twelve. That's a twelve. Yeah, the yeah. Avatar state. How do? You, yeah. How? So uh, if I could, if I could, if I could pitch a visual, Ruby just kind of sauntering over, picking him up by the jowls, and just. <laughs> 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 and then her eyes open up, and yes, it is indeed the Avatar state. You just see shady deals going off everywhere. You see, like a, you see an underground den of toads all tripping out on shrooms. <laughs> You see embezzlement. You see embezzlement by a, a bank of acorns. It's, yeah, uh, I was actually picturing toads freaking out on mushrooms, and then other animals freaking out on licking the toads. The toads. <laughs> on the toads, yes. But yeah, now, yeah, Ruby, you now co- like completely understand and are in, attuned to the, the the shady, the dark scent network, if you will. <laughs> and yeah, the last been the last message sent out on this network by Captain Dash Fox, but because it's obviously on a couple a different uh, sent networks at this point, um, was leave this place, uh, leave this leave this place. I can handle this myself. Oh, you you, you think you can you. handle it, eh? Uh, you... I don't know what exactly, I don't know what exactly these are, but um, oh, I, I've, behind his back. Yeah. I've escaped. I've escaped other snares. I should be fine. He does, however, every like five seconds, like put his tongue through the hole where his fang was, and there's like a little frown. <laughs> He's a little sad. I'm just gonna make one thing clear to you right now. If you try anything. You can rest assured that this predator's death is not going to be in private. Ooh. Oh, so you're Swole Possum 69. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's out of canon. That was too good of me not to make a joke of. That's so good. That's so good. <laughs> yeah, the first but like, yeah, there's, 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 <laughs> There's a there is a there is a spark of recognition now that he recognizes that you recognize the conversation within the, the religious scent network. You got we got we literally have access to the holy network and the unholy network. <laughs> the light and the light <laughs> and dark <laughs> web. We are the duality of man. <laughs> He's an anti-hero, baby. Yeah. My yin yang cat shirt now works even better. Let's go! Let's go! I wasn't quite sure what it was because I couldn't see the bottom. It's yin yang cat. Heck yeah! Anyway, Anyway, you. Listen. You've got a high ranking scoundrel uh, who should be willing to answer any of your questions. Should be. And you have. And you have, uh, like, 25 minutes left in the stream. I leave over to Sam, uh, Detective Morgan, and I go, he was trying to get us to go see the Lynx King, if you could figure out what's going on. This is kind of your field. My uh, field is getting him in the chair. That's great. Uh, I pull out my knife, and 
Oh no, another sharp thing. Oh yeah, that's gonna be. I feel like the tooth was more gruesome. I give the tooth back. Yeah, that one has a little bit of more psychological horror to it. Yes. No, that's fine. Uh, no, I'm not using this for psychological horror. I'm looking to make myself a, another coat. If you if you catch my drift. And I go up and I actually nick him in the face with the, with the knife. <laughs> Lady Foxes dig scars. I don't know. Uh, okay, yeah. We're going to do a threatening visage and we're going to roll with my own big charms. Like, <laughs> they don't dig corpses. <laughs> do, lady, do Lady Foxes dig crows in fur, in fur coats? N no, that's cross species. Uh, some, it's not something we box, do I just here. box cars on a might check to be threatening visage. <laughs> <clears throat> he. I, I Batman this motherfucker again. <laughs> you like, brand him? <laughs> you Batman v Superman brand him? Yeah. <laughs> nah, um. I break he... his other <laughs> <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> <laughs> he shuts up which is which is a lot he's been very yeah. cocky he, he yeah. has he has shut yeah, up humble. he's trying not to show how how rattled he is yeah you ain't never met a bird like me let's go all right so uh my my partner ronnie here uh tells me that the lynx king sent you however the last time that we had communication, you were working for one of them buzzards. You want to tell me who actually sent you? Lord Barrington. Yeah, yeah, I thought that. That's what I thought. So, what does Lord Barrington have to gain from getting rid of the Lynx King in Thrall and this whole scenario? That we have found ourselves in here. What else does he need but more power? He's already the biggest creature in the land. All that is standing in his way is a little formality called succession. So he's planning to take out the Lynx King. Well, the new one, I guess. It was supposed to be both. I was there. Oh, you were there. All right, all right. Oh, well, shit. This is uh, quite the predicament you found yourself in now, huh? Be confessing all your sins to a cop. That's cool. All what right. the hell is a cop? Yeah, we're we're gonna keep moving on. We're gonna we're gonna ignore. So, uh, was it you that set up the hunters, the the gods of death? How did that work out? The plan was simple. Routine patrol. The vultures were supposed to fly, circling above the patrol, just above the canopy line, so the Lynx King would be none the wiser. Of course, the hunters would come, knowing that carrion carries with it the potential for scavengers. And they found Lord Barrington and the Lynx King and the young cub. They didn't find me, and they definitely did find Thrall, who was first to get shot. But I didn't account for was the storm. A great wind kicked up out of nowhere, and with it, Thrall was whisked away. Something about the wild call he kept screaming at the top of his lungs. Something about saviors. But then he left, and no one could find him afterwards. The Lynx King found himself <sighs> clawing at his own child's right arm to free him from a snare. And with that, enough attention paid to the wrong thing at the wrong time and down toppled the king. The Baron, wanting to remain in the good graces, Lord Barry Barrington, war chief, decided that that was enough bloodshed for now. He wanted to remain in the good young king's graces to rally public support. 
And so he chased the hunters away, but only after they'd collected the young king's father. But Thrall has returned, knowing less than he should, but more than Lord Barrington would like. But I assume he knows now. He's looking out past the opening of the warren into the sky, but clearly in the direction that he knows that Thrall is talking to the, the barons of the Warren Lord. I've really screwed myself with these complicated words and long string sentences. <laughs> I told you. I gave you a chance to rebrand at the beginning of the Never! You did not take it. A DM doubles down! <laughs> <laughs> and that is why Thrall must die. And I must do as I must in the order of great to small. Oh, you did a little psychopath there, huh? All right, cool. Uh, before we go any further, Peter, we, there was a mild conversation where you talked to the, to you, what was the, the turkey buzzards, right? That's mm. a, Chancellor, a yes. Yeah, them chancellors. Yeah, the, you know. they they paid you off, right? To work for them. Everybody pays us. We work for everyone and for no one. It is the fox's way. Well, uh, who isn't working for the chancellor? Mm, the common people. There's a creepy owl somewhere who works for no one but his own vomit. Oh, I know him. Yeah. Yeah, I got we, we're familiar. You mean you, weird people. You get around. Yeah. The Falcons are loyal only to the crown and not to any noble nobility. The deer aristocrats they are no are loyal only to themselves. And the wolves also to the crown. Well, the uh, badgers to the bears, the rabbits to their warren, the toads to their muck, and the yeah, rats yeah, to their own self interest. Okay, everybody else kind of gets their own thing. We're, we're getting there. I got. The, I, I'm, I'm painting the picture. So how much? Uh, how much to get you guys off my back? A fox will always do what it takes to survive. A sentiment to... echoed <clears throat> by... I'm gonna... I, I, I got you, man. I'm gonna interrupt you. What if I told you that survival is a lot easier than how you're making it? I empty out a handful of kibble. What is that? All right, take a bite. You kind of do it on the other side of the broken tooth, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's salty and smoky and crunchy and somehow meaty. It's. What is. What? What's, yeah. What is that? What if I told you that you and all your magnificent stealth, you could get access to this pretty much every day? What? Crazy, right? This is money where I come from. Money. Yeah, currency. Gold, whatever you want to call it. This is what we use for trading of goods oh, and services. Mm -hmm. Co commerce, yeah. Thank you, Ronnie. And what creature is that made out of? That These? Who knows? We never see any any animal who gets turned into these little bits. We just know that, believe it or not, 
the humans put this out. The giants. The gods, the, the gods provide for us. The demons. We don't have want or need. That's a you just gotta be a little quieter than normal because you've, you're a lot bigger than most of the things where I come from. I'm gonna put it right there. Not much. Not much. You're not huge. But you're bigger than most. What manner of fool do you take me for that the land of the towering demons would shower my kind with 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 with, with this with with the, uh, these little morsels of oh nutrients boy. what the, the <laughs> real proof do you have of this i'm going to pull out the map that goes from where we started and clear, like, it's going to be something that along the way, Sam was taking a little bit better notes on what the map actually was. <laughs> he was doing some actual cartography from yeah. the old bird's eye not, view. Huh? Not great, but he was taking better notes on it. And it's like, now you see, if you follow this line here from where we came in, right by that junkyard, right? What if I told you that you don't have to go much further than this to go and find yards? Big old empty spots where there's just bowls of food put out bowls of this just out ready to be taken don't have to do any work it's just there and you give to me this information for my silence yeah just get your foxes off my back don't tell them where we are right now give us a give us a bit of time you and your fox buddies get barrington off my off my trail for a little bit Go get yourself a snack. Not the rat. Yeah, the I would avoid the rat. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you right now, you're going to want to avoid the rat. That, that was a there was a lot of shit going on with that rat. That was a huge pain in the ass. You do not want to deal with that rat. <laughs> I, I know it's crazy. I know it's weird. But man, do not, do, you do not want to fuck with that rat. <laughs> We had to, like, if you thought we, we were bad, suit up. we had to it's, suit up to fight that rat. It literally took all of us to take down that one rat. <laughs> and and you saw how easy we took down three foxes. So like, it's a simple deal. You say that you uh, you work for whoever pays you. I'm offering you payment. Here's a map right here. Take it right over to it. I'll give you the kibble for free. If okay. I'm wrong, if I'm wrong and you don't find any kibble, you can come back and you can kill me. Okay. How's that? Yes. I'm trading my life on this map being accurate. Yes. Okay. You... You all sound absolutely insane. I am covered in bones. You are... Speaking with a level of detail of very specific things that clearly you've all encountered, which only makes me believe you. There's not a lick of the scent of deceit on any of you, which honestly is terrifying. Even even her? <laughs> yes. We've seen some shit. Wow. Yeah, yeah Ruby, really, really, way to go. My vote, my vote <laughs> would have been to beat you to your bloody and That's... begging for mercy. <clears throat> But We're this still is considering bad. it, honestly. <laughs> Weird how the one covered in the carcass of a dead animal is is the one who's got the voice of wisdom going on right now. Yeah, I just I just hit people with flashlights. I'm gonna I'm on. gonna admit things uh -huh. have gotten really weird. <laughs> this is not my normal go to. I will take your bargain. Then me and my team we will leave this place. In search of a brave and, albeit more dangerous, frontier where we can truly work and survive for ourselves and only ourselves. Now, I am directing him uh, towards the, um, the healing god because he's the one who actually like leaves out food and mm. leaves his yard open and everything. Yeah. So I'm like guaranteeing that there's safety there. Uh, 
However, the only thing I'm concerned about is that we took a dumpster truck, like a dump truck ride. <laughs> dump truck ride, yeah. I don't, I don't remember exactly how far we had to go to get there, but it's okay. it'll be a, it'll be a coin toss. Yeah, yeah, that'll yeah. Be, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm making a gamble. A bit of a gamble. I'm a gamble that we could kick this guy's ass again. <laughs> <laughs> I will yeah, have to. Time he gets back, we'll be done. I will have to make a report to Lord Barrington. Um. You gotta falsify that report, right? Or the necessity of my report may yet prove of use to revolutionaries like yourselves. Wait, Go on. If you report back Explain. that we're already dead, we can strike him and he won't know. And we cut back to the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in the low stakes cooking. Station. Meanwhile, in the low. <laughs> uh, you and. Is, is it low stakes if you're cooking for a king, though? A king that could, like, tear you apart if you didn't like what you ate. Yeah. You and. The joke last week was that you were on the Great British Bake Off. And right. Was just, like, really nice uh, speaking of. <laughs> you and. Uh, you and a bunch of, you know, lower ranked chefs in this royal underground kitchen are uh, being timed and have been provided with the the entirety of the stock of the of the kingdom of the of the Lynx King's pantry. Um, anything that could be foraged in a forest is at your disposal, Critterick, aka Chewy. Um, and the time is now for you to think it up um and how you want to prepare it and all that and then definitely depending on what you want to do i'll give you a series of checks for it um but i will give you this no one already loves you and so you're gonna have a bit of an easier time than the other chefs but yes it's a flurry of activity uh as there are young Google's birds being an ass. <laughs> no google don't do that uh, a flurry of like literally useless now. Oh Sorry. no! Need something with fiddleheads. Don't talk about our corporate overlords like that. <laughs> Google. Sucks. <laughs> 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 will not silence me. The stream goes down. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Ah! Oh, uh, I forgot about this. There is a squirrel in the station over next to next to you who is just dripping sweat, but with lightning speed, chopping uh, nuts into a puree uh, and spreading them on thin uh, th thin mats of edible grasses. And there's a, a bird uh, uh, in front of you who, with uh, a lot of very fine feather control, is whipping an egg with a tear in its eye, into a nice meringue. Uh, what do we see Chewy doing in the heat of this culinary atmosphere? Chewy has been messing around with herbs, sniffing, smelling, getting all the the feel for all the all the different flavors. He's got something, something in his brain is cooking. We got lemongrass. We got star he's got, anise. He's, we got he's picking up. He's picking up all these different herbs and he cinnamon. Tiny wild doves. Tiny wild doves? As in high... Uh, I don't know what that is at all. A dove. Like a like a squab. A uh, tiny, like a uh, like wild bird. Oh, okay. It's like dead, uh, though. Th think, think You're not gonna just pigeon. kill it. You're not gonna no, kill no, I mean, this like, bird. Like the raw, the raw yeah. bird. Like, they, they would have it in the kitchen already. So, yeah. so he, he sees these, these tiled... Tiny wild squabs. Mm -hmm. And he takes those. And he takes a bigger bird. And he goes, Bites... And a main course type of thing, where he, he'll take the bird, and he'll put the little birds around the side of it. Cool. And, uh, and as he's, uh, he's, he's sort of, like, starting to prepare those birds, and, and baking them, and, and, and grilling them, and sort of, like, uh, like, getting that, like, nice crisp skin and juicy breast. Give me a finesse chart. adding all these different herbs and stuff to it. Heck yeah. That's uh, a... 11 cool 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 uh yeah you I, I don't really know the process to make that particular dish <laughs> uh 
Uh, but you if, if it were me, I would bake them a little bit. And then when you want to get that nice sear on them, you put them in the, the pan for a little bit, and you let them just sort of, like, like caramelize the skin a little bit. Yeah. Uh, it's and like, like the, the one of those... Sauce. It's like one of those cooking videos out where the, that guy's outside, and he, like, butters a rock, like one of those flat rocks. So that's what, oh, that's what oh, you're... I love those videos. Those are so zen for me. Mm-hmm. I love them so much. I like catch and cook videos. They're a lot of fun. Oh uh, yeah, uh, and so that's what you're you're grilling on and sautéing on, and it's just there's this flat rock with like a tiny bit of embers underneath that get the little tiny flame, uh, just cooking off, and then uh, Nona with her what with her not watch with like a hourglass made of like leaves and dirt. Uh, she sees the last grains fall, and she's everyone. Stop. Time for presentation is now. Everyone, yes. Mm-hmm. She starts making the rounds. There is uh, a small. There's a, a chipmunk who's got like a like a, a row of like meatballs on little twigs, and she takes it. She says, um, "My recipe is better." Uh, and she goes to the next, the, the squirrel who's next to you, and she says, Nuts again? Do you, do you cook with anything else? Literally anything else? Nuts. I know you're a squirrel, but do you cook little... Uh, How did you manage to make nuts raw? I don't get it. How did you do that? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what that was, but all right. Um, she what? goes. Oh, I was trying to open this with my teeth. <laughs> oh, <laughs> why? <laughs> Cause it's wet on the outside and I couldn't get the lid off. Okay. Uh, she finds. <laughs> I was gonna say it's bad, bad audio, but it is what a raccoon would want to do. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> <laughs> she goes to, she goes to like a little tortoise who's there. Uh, and samples this, like, soup that this tortoise has made. And she says, This is not what your brother would have wanted to be turned into. This is not, this is not that good. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I was thinking of, like, turtle soup because you said tortoise and soup in the same sentence, too. I did. That was the morbid, <laughs> morbid joke I just made. <laughs> oh, wow. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> um, I listen, there's a bird right in front of you who's up next to has a, 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 like a fleet of little pastries with that meringue that the bird whipped up with an egg. Um, <laughs> Let's just hope it wasn't fertilized. This is, this is the I mean, darkest cooking it's show. a dark world we live that I've created here in the culinary world of animals cooking. This is all me. <laughs> um, she takes a bite. Good berry flavor. The crust is a little too crumbly, but is this is this is not this is definitely the best one thus far. Yeah? Sure, she's got this kind of stoic, um, unimpressed face that she's held for each one of these tastings, and then she looks at your face and she brightens up. She's like, "My baby, my sweet nephew, let me see what you have. Let me see what you have. Let me see yours. Oh, you've made the." Uh, you made the little bird, little birds. Can you t- can you tell me about your dish? Yes. So I took a mixture of all of these. Like uh, you got your lemongrass and and you got your like your your pungent stuff here to sort of like uh, balance out the the, the 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 flavor of the meat. And then you got mm. this sweet like glaze to make it all nice and crispy on the outside. If you bite into it, it should be super juicy. She takes. Her claws. And a bit of the juice squirts out from her mouth. And she goes, oh! I'm sorry. And she takes her apron and pats her mouth. It's supposed to do that. It's it's very good. It's very good. Everyone, 
This is 100% nepotism, but it is also skill. My nephew has one, and she holds up your hand. I mean, if anybody has any complaints, they can taste it. Yeah. Uh, everyone, uh, everyone, including after a couple of minutes, the tortoise manages to get over to your station uh, and picks up uh, a morsel. And just there's a cacophony of the crackling of the, the the nice and crispy skin and the squirting of the fragrant, delicious juices. It is all very nice. It is a beautiful tableau of fine cooking. Um, and I think that's a really good uh, place to end on uh, today's episode because we do have le 10 minutes left in the stream but we st also still need to do housekeeping. So that's where we're going to end tonight. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's time to do housekeeping. Does anyone have any advancements they'd like to pitch? The Roots system doesn't do EXP in the way that most TTRPGs do if you're not familiar with Roots. Uh, each character has a couple of drives and if they fulfill their drives or add, is drives the right word? The term? Right term? Right? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. If they fulfill their drives in a session, they can pitch to me, the game master, um, a point that they can spend in getting something else that their character can do, or uh, an improvement to their stats. So does anyone have an advancement they'd like to pitch for me? I do have a question. What is that? Would I have advanced, not advanced, uh, uh, yeah, actually, advanced with a reputation with what I've done? Yes. Yes, yes, Aaron. I'm gonna Yeah, you have uh I'm gonna say you can get uh uh plus three prestige. Three three notches in prestige. With the forest, the forest horde, horde in general or okay. With the forest horde, yes. Okay. Okay. That puts me up to a little after the plus one, like just with just the one after that. Heck cool. yeah. Everyone in the forest loves the new Gordon Ramsay of the Woods. <laughs> They're like the nice Gordon Ramsay of the Woods. <laughs> Chewy raccoonsy. <laughs> uh, Ronnie, what you got for me? I almost died in the name of protection. Yeah. Sure That's did. protection. That's yeah. I protected my ward. That's Correct. My thing. Yes. I did my that, is, that is I your thing. Two yes. exhaustion and four injury, but I did it. You did it. Good job. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> What's I up? have escaped capture or death. The foxes tried to kill. You us. did. You did do that. Good, good fucking job. Yay! <laughs> Congratulations! Hooray! You got something for me, Morgan, or not? Nah? Uh, does does meeting how uh, work as discovering a new wonder in the forest? Do you find him wonderful? <laughs> I find him wonderfully I... awful. <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> He's at least wonderfully odd. It's uh, advanced when you encounter a new wonder or ruin in the forests. He's, and I don't he's know if he a counts wonder. As a wonder. He's a wonder. All right. You 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 wonder about his sanity. <laughs> um, and I know we already have a really strong uh contender for our Patreon art pitch. Uh, which is bone out, bone alternate skin for uh, Detective Sam Morrigan. <laughs> bone, uh, bone, I was thinking bone, of calling it yeah, I'm Rat Man. That's, that's <laughs> perfect. Um, so we're just going to put uh, I'm Rat Man in for the running right off the bat. Uh, because it's such an obvious one that everyone here seems to love, it's going to be a super special fifth voting option. And if everyone else gets another. Ooh. Uh, okay. pitch that if they want to pitch me, they can do. Uh, uh, I want Ruby holding up the fox fang triumphantly. God damn, it was mine. Fox fang. You, you knocked it out, but I caught it. So, like, yeah, that's what, that's, what, that's what I meant. I wanted you catching it in the air was what mine was going to be. But I, got to one now. I just got Ashley Roboto as an ad on Twitch. Okay. <laughs> Not what it. What is what? What? Yeah, I don't know what that is. Either. I don't know I'm what that is. Yeah. Uh, She's advertising uh, TD. <laughs> touchdown. T toad. <laughs> no, it's, it's, toad it's dysphoria. <laughs> Everyone. Who is she? Who is she? Uh. 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 Because like, uh, it's one thing to advertise a bank, but like, why is this? Who is this person? She, she she's a streamer. Um, I I I haven't watched her recently. 
Oh. Oh, okay. She is very the gay. Yay, the gay! Yes. Okay, uh, so we have Ruby's alternate pitch besides Bone Coat. (laughs) Everyone else gets one, let's go! I'm still trying to think of something. (laughs) Like, the the only thing that's going in my head is, like, Chewy with Gordon Ramsay, like... Like, back to back? Like, that that didn't happen in the the thing, though. (laughs) It doesn't have to. It could still be a pitch. <laughs> could be okay, fun. That I, I am pitching like Chewie and Gordon Ramsay cooking together or something. Oh, I don't know. I was, if we can just pitch things that didn't happen, can I just get <laughs> Goon holding up a sign that says I only made this season so I could practice furry art? Like, if we can just say what <laughs> Okay. Uh, Goon with furry sign. I only have so many characters. <laughs> Oh, I can only have. Hold on, I can only have up to four Goon is options. A furry. Oh no. Goon is, is furry. Is James okay with his being? I'm um, Ratman. I'm a bone Bonecoat. Bone uh, my original one was gonna be uh, Ronnie Super Smash Brother uh, home run batting the two. Home run bat tooth. <laughs> yeah. uh, but okay, yeah, that that sparkle from the charger. I, I didn't like, yeah, mine was mine was a joke, so I'm willing to give up mine for okay. Iron Ratman. Well, wait, but okay, uh, okay. So if you're wanting to give yours up for Ratman, we can do. Uh, yeah, t- mine was just a dumb bit. Tooth smash. <laughs> tooth smash. Smash. The new, the new Hulk character, Tooth. He's all white and he's <laughs> jagged. He's got big. He turns into a big possum, man. <laughs> Tooth smash home run. Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm Ratman's gonna get it. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, saving that. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, and if you want to vote for that, it'll be up tomorrow, sometime after this is done premiering on YouTube. If you didn't catch all of the stream, this whole vod is gonna be up on YouTube tomorrow at eleven. Uh. And to start premiering at 11, it'll be done premiering at around 1. So if you want to watch the whole thing, you can go ahead and do that on my YouTube uh, link in the where the links are. Uh, if you want to vote on the Patreon art, uh, you go to my Twitter, which is also linked where the links are. Uh, if you want to see the finished art that got voted on and approved by you, the fans, you go to patreon.com slash daddy's dungeon D and D. Like I said, next Tuesday I'm gonna have to make uh both this week and last week's art because of scheduling. Uh so you'll get to see the animal and human form of Captain Dash Fox worthy along with whatever we vote for uh this week. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'm gonna set you guys free to go watch Critical Roll because I know that's about to start. I of course have been your 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 diggity dungeon master, your game guy, your garbage man who's just like kind of walking around the woods watching these animals do stupid stuff. Uh, goon, D A D D Y, Goon Daddy, uh, playing uh, Food Wars protagonist, aka Chef Chewy Raccoon, has been Critteric. Food. <laughs> Food. Uh, Playing uh, Revolution Airy Possum has been Ruby Possum, aka the Moss Creature. Yeah, I, I need to make this fang into a sword or something, and just like, as we charge, that's my weapon that I hold. Tooth high. Dagger, tooth you dagger. recognize this? It's Sting! <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, His name's gonna be Stab. Playing our pious possum, aka Ronnie Possum, has been the Noodle Doodler. I need medical attention. Haha! <laughs> rather than later. Anyone else would be dead right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and playing I Am the Scratching, I Am the Squeak, I Am Ratman, uh, is uh, aka Detective Sam Morgan, aka Video, Video, Video James. I, as disgusted as I am, I can just make this coat work. It's a good look on me. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching, and remember, y'all are trash. Freaking bones.
Do you want to get to the Underdark? Because this is how you get to the Underdark. <laughs> this, is, this is how you get to the Underdark, my dude. This makes it, this makes it look like I killed a rat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have been waiting for an excuse to bring in a crazy Oracle Owl character for a couple of sessions now.